Hey folks, welcome back. So this is video two of the Zorin 12.2 uh, uh, OS review. The first one was sort of like an introductory video which kind of went through the kind of overall uh, feature set and what you get for default apps and, uh, and the versions available to you. So in this video, we're actually gonna go through the install of the OS. It's not very long to do, it's pretty straightforward. I did have a bunch of folks out there kind of request that I go through a setup process, even if it's in a virtual machine, kind of get an idea of what it's like to install uh, Linux as a uh, operating system. So I'm actually at the login screen of Zorin, and I figured I'll start right here. Now this is a virtual machine, and I have the recording software kind of uh, window to that so you may not see the top menus but it really won't matter because I'm gonna actually bring down the main windows so you guys can see what I'm doing so let's go ahead and get started alright so I'm gonna go ahead and click on file and new virtual machine here and this is uh, VMware Workstation 12 you guys may be running something different or, or Oracle uh, has a virtualization software as well if, if you guys are interested in that or you might be running it through parallels on your Mac so you, there are a number of options for you to pick from and I'm going to choose typical here because it's it's uh, the you know, quickest way to kind of get things going. I'll click next. I'm actually going to choose an ISO file because that's where I downloaded it from. And uh, this is the ultimate uh, edition, if you will. So you can see that it's 64-bit. I'm going to go ahead and click that and click next. Uh, I'll leave it as Linux, obviously. And I'm, it's picked up Ubuntu 64-bit, which is fine. It obviously won't have Zorin in here. You can see that from the list. I have things like Red Hat and Novell and Debian, uh, but I, I don't actually have one for Zorin, which is no surprise because it's a, it's a you know alternate distribution of Linux and it's based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. So I'm going to pick the upstream uh, version uh, or the upstream um, uh, OS uh, in this case, which will be Ubuntu 64-bit. Click next here. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, rename this to. Okay, and let's go ahead and choose a folder location. Let's go ahead and just say that, and we'll choose this. And uh, I'm going to make a new folder here. I'm just going to call it test because I can delete it once we're done. And I'll click next. This is asking us for the size of the hard disk. Uh, 20 gigs is way more than enough. You know, if you're just testing this out. Obviously, if you're installing this on your laptop or server or, or PC, you want to you know give it the space that it needs. Maybe just throw in like a 120 gig drive or something even a little bit bigger. If you plan to use this as your you know uh, main operating system with all your system files and applications and all that, and you can actually see the um, the screen change here on the back for us. That's the Zorin uh, screensaver, if you will, at the back. I'm going to go ahead and choose it uh, to be a single file. You, there are uh, minuses and pluses to having them split into multiple files, uh, but I think for moving, they're a lot easier to do it as a single file. And uh, I'm going to leave it as such. We'll just give it 40 gigs just for this testing purpose. I'm going to go ahead and choose to customize the hardware here. Uh, I'm going to remove the printer in this uh, setup because I don't actually need that. We can leave everything else as is. I'm going to choose the network adapter here, and uh, right now it's set up for NAT, which is Network Address Translation. Essentially what that does is it takes your, your PC's IP address, for those of you that are not aware, it takes your PC's IP address and it kind of mirrors it or clones it, and then you know uses that to get online. Uh, I actually have multiple routers and a whole network set up here, so I'm just going to say bridged because I want this virtual machine to go out to my router and obtain a IP address from that, right? An actual IP address I can talk to any of the other computers on the network, so it makes things a little bit easier for me. So I'm gonna leave it as bridged. And for processors, I'm gonna give it uh, two. Uh, let's go ahead and give it uh, two processors, or two cores uh, in the processor. And uh, for memory, let's just jack this up to, I don't know, say 12 gig, okay? And we'll go ahead and close that out here. And just kind of gives you a quick summary of what you're about to install. And uh, that looks good for this particular setup. So let's go ahead and click Finish here. And in a second, it'll bring up this window. Now, obviously, this is virtual machine, and, and I can go ahead and edit the settings again, and I can make any changes I want to, or additions, and add new drives. But for our testing purpose, this is really uh, good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and power this guy back on, and wait for this thing to kick back up. 
So normally when you install an OS in virtual machine, you'll get this pop-up box here. You may even get something else that says uh, install v uh, VMware tools. Obviously, if you guys are, have worked with virtual machines before, uh, especially in the VMware world, you know that VMware tools is a really useful uh, tool set to run your VMs. Uh, I'm just going to click uh, this for now. I finish installing because we're going to run through this setup, uh, you know, easy enough. There's no real need to have this bar come up here and, and remind me that uh, I've installed the OS, so I'm about to install the OS. And we'll let this go through. And you can see it's loading up the, uh, the installer now. So you're presented with two options here. Most of the Linux installs, for those of you that are just kind of coming into the Linux world, you'll notice that the installer disk, when you first boot up from it, you're given two options where you can try it. Uh, or you can install it. So try the OS or install it. And the try is basically sort of a, a live CD or uh, think of it as an, uh, uh, an install of the entire OS that comes from the disk itself or the ISO. Now, what it does in the background is it does use a partition on, on, it, on the disk and it kind of uses memory to present, you, present to you a virtual machine or an actual operating system, but it's not a real live operating system. You know, there's actually no major install of the files and system files on the disk. So for, for our purpose, we're actually going to go ahead and install uh, Zorin and I'm going to leave English as the language. Click next here, and what I do is I actually download the updates and install third-party uh, software uh, for two reasons. One, of course, you need to install the updates regardless, right? So while this thing is installing, and you go and get a cup of coffee and come back, let it do its thing. It's one less thing for you to, to worry about. Second thing is I want to install the third-party software because I've actually downloaded and paid for the ultimate edition of this OS, and so in order to test this whole thing out, I really want to see what it's like and what it comes with. Um, on the initial install. So I'll click continue here and uh, it brings us up to the the disk partitioning uh, section of the of the install wizard and it's asking you you know just to erase the disk and install Zorn. Nine out of ten times you'll choose just this default option here and click install now. You know you do have the option to encrypt the Zorn installation uh, meaning your your folders, your security folder, your home folders, your user folders they'll be encrypted and uh, makes it harder for folks to kind of get into. Depending on your install, your environment, that's completely up to you if you want to do that. And then it asks you to use LVM. LVM is a volume manager, it's a logical volume manager, and what that does is it allows you to uh, add more space, remove space, uh, you know, much more easily than you would in a normal install. And uh, for our purpose, we really don't need that. You know, this is just a testing round here. You know, most folks that run Red Hat or uh, Linux in a corporate environment will most likely use the LVM. Red Hat will use LVM as well. I think part of its version 7 default install it chooses that. So it, it has a, a number of great uh, advantages to use, but in our case, not really. So I'll say erase the disk and install, and I'll say install now. And it's just warning me here that if I continue, the changes listed here will be written to the disks, uh, the disk, and uh, do I really want to do that? So yes, I'll go ahead and say yes, and let it continue here. Uh, New York is fine for now. I'll click continue. And it's asking me for the keyboard layout. Now, obviously, this is a small window here, so you know you can, you may have to move the window. Uh, based on how much real estate you have, screen real estate you have. So you can see clearly that some of the buttons were hidden, but you know, it's not a big deal. So yes, yeah, so I do want to choose English here and the type will be English and I'll say continue. Here we're asking for the name. So for the name, I'm just going to say uh, TBB test and uh, I'll leave the virtual name. That's fine. Pick a name as, as that, choose a password. And uh, it says require password to log in. I, I never uncheck that. I, I don't want the operating system to log in automatically. This is whether it's a test VM or an actual computer or you know your friend's computer, family computers. You don't want it to automatically log in. You know the more layers of security you can add, you know that are logical, the better the user will be. So I definitely want to do that. I don't want to encrypt my home folder either. And I'll say continue. And it's going to go through and start copying files, downloading all the packages it needs, and updating the files. So instead of you guys hanging on and, and watching this, uh, you know, go through the actual process, I'll go ahead and pause the video, and I'll come back once it's uh, done. 
So it looks like the um, installation did complete here. And I'm going to go ahead and just restart the VM now and uh, I'll come back once that's uh, finished too. So the reboot completed, only took uh, about maybe 20 seconds or so, and we're at the login screen. So uh, let's go ahead and click on the user here, enter in the password, and see what it looks like when you first install the OS. So here's the desktop here. Obviously, we're not presented with the widescreen here because the VMware tools is not installed. We'll do that. That's one of the first things we'll actually do just so we can have some more real estate and uh, obviously have some more features with VMware such as drag and drop files and into the uh, OS. So, But this is what you get. No top bar here, a single bar at the bottom here. Looks like you have your status with your network and volume and your power options all into one. And then you've got your date, and it uh, looks like you'll have your notification center here as well. So pretty uh, clean, kind of neat layout for the OS. You've got your menu system here uh, set up. And uh, we'll take a look at the version of the kernel. We'll take a look at the desktop environment and the apps uh, in the next couple of videos, just so you guys can kind of take a look at those and, and see if you're interested in um, those features. So this is what you normally get. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the VMware tools next because obviously that's, that's really the first thing you want to do along with updating your system. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, install those tools now. And I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say open terminal. And as I've mentioned before in a couple of other videos I put out, you know, you get this sort of banner message here that says to run a command as administrator or as root, quote unquote, you should use the sudo command. That'll go away once you actually log in uh, as root or perform a sudo command. So I'm going to go ahead and say sudo uh, apt install, and then it'll be open VM tools desktop. Enter my password and say yes and let it go through the process. It takes just a minute or two to install. Now, I'm using Open Tools, which I've mentioned in other videos as well, that Open Tools and VMware Tools is, you know, they both come from the same OEM vendor, so really, uh, it's up to you on which one you want to install. Uh, I prefer the o Open VMware Tools uh, in this case. And once you, ins once you install it, nine out of 10 times, you really don't even have to reboot. You'll see the screen will auto resize and you know, you should be good to go. Uh, this particular release with Zorin, I found when I tested it before that I did have to install. So let's see what it says. Yeah, in fact, look, you can see that it's actually still that, that small window here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly reboot and uh, hopefully that, that should take care of the changes. So I'll click here. And these three icons are actually um, all packaged, if you will. So anywhere you click is gonna present you with the same pop-up window. So let's go ahead and click on power and I'll say restart and I'll wait for the system to go through and I'll come back once it's uh, finished. Okay, so we're back from the reboot here. Uh, it's still got a small screen or it's still not sort of utilizing the rest of the real estate, but let's go ahead and log back in here real quick and see if that changes for us. Give it a couple of seconds to get back into the OS. And there you go. Okay, so it looks like it did resize and uh, We've got a bunch more real estate now to play with uh, and a 1080p window and it does give you a sort of nice scenic uh, or kind of uh, beautiful background here of a lake and uh, you're good to go. So that's pretty much the install uh, of the OS. You know, pretty straightforward and simple, not too uh, problematic as some of the other system installs can be. There are some distributions of Linux out there. L let me rephrase, not necessarily problematic, but a little bit more involved. You've got to, you know, compile some packages and do a little bit more manual approach to get it installed. But since this is based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian, uh, you know, a couple of clicks of a wizard gets you into the desktop of the uh, OS. So hope hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at the operating system, which includes the kernel and desktop environment and the default apps. And then obviously my general thoughts on the OS, uh, especially since this is now uh, something that you have to pay something like 22 bucks for if you're interested in getting the ultimate edition. So thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.